Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are filling up a new teeny tiny palette that I made to go along with a sketchbook because I made this mini sketchbook a while ago and it is made from a paper that I really want to get used to because it is fairly inexpensive if you buy it like in big sheets of paper instead of pads. Um, and since this is a paper for printmaking, I I found it in like the scrap paper at, in class. And whenever I am cutting paper for printing, I always keep the scraps instead of letting them go to waste. So yeah, I made a sketchbook with the scraps. So <laughs> that's nice. So I made a palette to accompany that and because it has green thread and gray, a gray cover and a sticker of a pigeon that I really like, I wanted to match those colors. And for that reason, I... Oh, I before I forget, I have recorded this a bunch of times. If you hear weird noises that I wasn't able to edit it out, it's because construction work is still happening during their lunchtime. So, uh, <laughs> and I have to upload the video today, so I will record this today. But yes, um, I forgot to tell you what I was going to tell you, so that's great. Oh yeah, uh, Rosa Spina, Rosa Spina Fabriano paper is the paper I'm using, but I will leave links in the description because my horrible pronunciation won't help you find it, and I'm aware of that. But yes, uh, I chose the colors to match the sketchbook, and I really like to do that. So, to match the grey of the cover, I chose um, two uh, combinations of colors to mix uh, grey. So, Potter's Pink, which is PR233, and Cerulean Blue which is PB35, I'm sorry, I just dropped the palette, <laughs> I'm looking at it to tell you the colors. Um, I chose those two, these two colors for both the pigeon feathers and the um, grey cover, I, and also the um, cobalt blue, which is, let me just check, I think it's PB28, yes, PB28, and the um, two colors by Mission Gold. One is light red, which is made with PBR25, PR112 and PY150. I really like this color and don't mind it to have three pigments. I just, I really like the color and I don't care about how many pigments this one in specific has. And I think, yes, in this palette this is the only color that is multi-pigment. Then, I also uh, chose red brown, which is PBR 25, yes, 25, also by Mission Gold, because I thought it would be great for the wood leg of the pigeon, because the way it mixes with cobalt blue and with cerulean blue, it's great to mix that kind of hue. For the beak of the pigeon and for its leg, I chose Scarlet Lake by Winsor & Newton and I think this... I don't know if this color is still in production or not, I have no idea. This is a very old tube. But what I know is that it is PR188, but when you dilute it a lot, you get almost exactly the color of the pigeon's beak and paw. <laughs> and then to match the, um, the thread, I chose green by White Knights, which is PG8, and it's an amazing color, although it is not very light fast. Since this is just a sketchbook, I don't care. Just in this instance, because I'm not selling this, it just it's just for a sketchbook. So yeah. In this case, it's okay to use a fugitive color, and I'm using PG8, and I am using PY150, which is not fugitive, it is permanent, um, and I love that color, and these two make a green very close to the thread of the sketchbook. These are the colors I'm using. Just a recap, I'm using Nickel Azo Yellow, PY150, Light Red, 
by Mission Gold, which is PBR25, PR112, and PY150. I'm using a red brown, which is PBR25. Also, I'm using Potter's Pink, which is PR233. Green by White Knights, which is PG8. A Cobalt Blue, which is PB28. And Cerulean Blue, which is PB35, along with Scarlet Lake which is PR188, just in case you want to do some research about pigments. Now you know which ones I'm using. So, and each of these pigments have quite a few different characteristics, and I really like the granulation in the potter's pink and both blues. I really like the glow of the of both the green, nickel azo yellow, and the PBR 25 brown. I really like the glow of these colors. And then PR188 is just, you know, the hue was perfect. I'm not, I don't use that color a lot outside of this palette, but it was perfect for this palette, so I decided to include it. Light Red by Mission Gold. I just love it. I have no other explanation. I just love it. Even though it is a tree pigment blend, it's just amazing. I love that color. On to the Mixing chart. On the left side of the mixing thing on my watercolor recipe book, you know, <laughs> on the left page of this spread I have a little tiny drawing to see where each color is on the palette and that is where I'm going to write the pigment in just a few minutes. The pigment numbers, you know. Just on the right of that I have three of my favorite mixes, which I will also identify later, but the first one is Potter's Pink with Cerulean Blue, the second one is Light Red with Cobalt Blue, and the third one I chose Scarlet Lake with Nickel Azo Yellow, just so I wouldn't repeat the Light Red, because I really wanted to. Then, below that, there is a mixing chart, which is probably what you are seeing now. I haven't edited the video yet, but in theory, it would be here that I would be doing the mixing chart. Along the top is where I'm going to write the name of each color along with the brand and it has uh, just a stripe of the color just by itself. And then running along the diagonal from left to right, from the top left to the bottom le uh, right, wait, top left, bottom right of the chart that diagonal will have the pigment, the pigment note, the, um, the color by itself as well. I tried to make, I believe this was two by two or one and a half by one and a half, something like that. Centimeters, not inches, centimeters. So by that reason, I tried to use a bit more water to show off the granulation of the pigments but I'm not sure whether that worked or not. I can see it, but it's not as noticeable as in some other instances. But yeah, it still is enough to understand that there are, you know, granulating pigments. <laughs> okay, so what I did was each column has a dominating color and that color is dictated by that stripe on the top. For instance, the first column is dominated by the yellow, so every mix on that column will have more yellow than the other color, and so on and so forth. In, a, in every single column, this happens with one of the colors. And then, in each row, that color will be weaker. It's just so I can see how the mix looks with more of one color or more of the other. It gives me a little bit more variety. On the right page of the spread, I'm doing like color triad, triads as if I was going to use, you know, use these colors in the place of primary colors in a primary color triad. In this case, I only have one yellow and I'm not feeling like making other colors do the job of the yellow, at least not today. What I did was each circle or almost circle because sometimes these look like triangles <laughs> but yes on these circles the first one is the yellow with cobalt blue and potter's pink the second one is the same yellow with green and potter's pink then the third one yellow cobalt blue and red brown the fourth yellow green and light red the fifth 
is yellow cerulean blue and scarlet lake and the sixth and last one is yellow cerulean blue and light red. I chose these ones because in here there are a few of my favorite mixes and there are a few of my favorite color combos. It's highly probable that I will be using like only three colors in this page or something like that because I tend to use that a lot unconsciously. It's not something that I always do on purpose but I tend to use very few colors when I have a large palette just because... I know this is a tiny palette but it has eight colors and I like to use only three or four... Sorry for the sound, I just bumped the tripod, tripod thing. <laughs> But yeah, I really like working with limited palettes, so I always do these mixes. I forgot to tell you, in the center of each circle, the dark uh, part in the middle is the mix of the three colors that I have used in that circle. So yeah, I, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you you and you like knowing how how my process is for choosing colors for a new palette. Um and yeah, I really hope you enjoyed watching this and I hope you learned something. If you didn't, that's fine. But I hope I am telling you something new, which is always nice. <laughs> I hope to see you next week, but I can't promise because I'm starting school again next week. Um and it will be a stressful month. But if I'm not back next week, I will be back around June. <laughs> Which is not that bad. I mean, it's a smaller stop, you know. <laughs> but yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click the like button. Uh, bleh, click the like button, because it really helps. I hope so. Maybe consider subscribing. And if you do, don't forget the little bell icon, otherwise it's not really like you're subscribed, you know. Uh, and yeah, if you need anything or if you want to ask me anything, don't forget that the comments below are, below are always available. I try to reply to everyone on time, but if it takes me a little longer, it's because I, I didn't have Wi-Fi turned on. <laughs> or I was sleeping, you know. But yeah, uh, I'll see you next time. <laughs>